Hey, what's good, you guys? It's Boomer with Bolly Star, and today we're getting into how Logic's corny song saved a generation from dying. You feel me? So, uh, yeah, man. Um, when I first heard that song, I think it's called One Eight Hundred Some. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a dope song. You know what I'm saying it was definitely a song to sing to. You feel me? Uh, made me listen to an album of his for the first time and that was the everybody album and i thought that album was the concept was really dope bro it honestly blew my mind you feel me so yeah no nah, man shout out to logic bro like and yeah now nah, that song bro like not only was it catchy it was riveting you know it gets the people going but you know also saves a bunch of lives you know it gets them going from or should i say it gets them going away from the Okay, I was about to make a dark joke. I don't know if I can make... I'm going to just say it. It gets them going away from the knife. You feel me? So, so uh, yeah, bruh. Or whatever other means. So, yeah. Let's get straight on into it, man. Make sure to leave a like, support the video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new so that we can join up with the all-star gang up in this thing. Let's get straight on into it, man. Let's go. All across the U.S., there are families who still have their son and daughters with us today because of a track by Logic. People have escaped self-termination urges and their families have avoided unimaginable grief, all because of someone considered to be a nerdy rapper from Maryland. And whether you're a fan of Logic or not, his story shows the sheer power of music and hip-hop. Logic is not your run-of-the-mill rapper. As a teenager, he was a massive Tarantino fan and realized that the score of Kill Bill was written by RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan. He then started appreciating hip-hop more and its capacity to tell stories. This curiosity of hip-hop grew into an obsession and evolved into him becoming a rapper himself. His early mixtapes demonstrated a high level of lyricism in a range of flows and was heavily inspired by East Coast hip-hop acts such as Wu-Tang, Nas, Black Thought, and Jay-Z. He was good, and he knew it. In 2010, he released his first mixtape and told himself that he was going to be on the XXL freshman list. And in 2013, there he was, on the freshman list. Fast forward to 2015, and he had released his second commercially and critically acclaimed album. He should have been on top of the world. Instead, he was in the hospital. He had a panic attack and was diagnosed with derealization, an anxiety-inducing disorder where you feel like you're outside of your own body. Logic was at a crossroad in the hospital. He had a panic attack and was diagnosed with derealization, an anxiety-inducing disorder where you feel like you're outside of your own body. Logic was at a crossroads where he could continue rapping or leave the music world behind. Logic's decision in 2016 was to continue touring despite feeling incredibly depressed. He was all too aware of the shelf life rappers have and needed to stay relevant. He told the New York Post, I was on a tour bus crying, saying, I can't do this anymore. But Logic soldiered on. And one of the things that made touring a lot more bearable was visiting fans. During a 2016 tour, he traveled from L.A. to New York and started hanging out with fans city by city. When meeting all of them, he kept hearing the same phrase, your music saved my life. Logic says he wasn't even trying to do this, but he realized the power he had as an artist. What if he literally tried to save people's lives? So he eventually came up with the song 1-800-273-8255, which is the actual number as an artist what if he literally tried to save people's lives so he eventually came up with the song 1-800-273-8255 which is the actual number you call for prevention in the u.s it appeared on his 2017 album everybody and his logic taking the perspective of someone on the line contemplating self-termination towards the end of the song he takes on the perspective of the person on the other line saying he doesn't need to die the central message is that these feelings are temporary and not the way to go, and it was more of a poppy sound than Logic's regular rap. It was released as a single in May 2017, and as a music video three months later in August. But a life-changing event happened toward the end of August, when Logic was called up to perform at the MTV VMA Awards. On that night, Logic delivered a memorable performance of 1-800, where he brought on stage survivals of self-termination attempts and families who had lost someone through taking their own lives. The awards were also commemorating the death of Lincoln Park's Chester Bennington, who had recently passed in the same manner. So Logic's song was the perfect way of putting a positive message on that topic. 
But the most startling thing of all was what happened after that performance. It was reported that the hotline received 50% more calls than usual. And this was clearly no coincidence. People were making that leap and getting the help that they needed. He soon made it to number 9 on the Billboard charts. It was clearly not just listened to by Logic fans anymore and had taken on a life of its own. It had gone way beyond hip-hop audiences and was Grammy nominated for Song of the Year. He lost out to Childish Gambino's This Is America, but was also asked to perform at the Grammys as well. And just like the VMAs, something strange happened afterwards. Calls to the 1-800 number had tripled. There was a clear correlation between Logic's song and performances and people reaching out. And this surprised hip-hop and music fans everywhere, but it also particularly interested researchers in self-termination prevention. This was a case study that they needed to pay attention to. Just how powerful was this song? Professor Thomas N., a professor at Medical University of Vienna, decided to lead a study into this and see how Logic's song impacted self-termination prevention. They looked over a 34-day period which covered the release of the song, its performance at the VMAs, and its performance at the 2018 Grammys. The hotline received in excess of 9,915 calls after each of these three events. This was an increase by 6.9%. During the same period, the expected number of deaths dropped by 245. So it was assumed that the wide publicity of the song, the increase in calls afterward, and the resulting decrease in the number of self-termination events were all connected. Essentially, a song by Logic saved over 200 people. And there is a slight chance that this could all be coincidence. The study admits that. But at the same time, for three separate things to happen at the same exact time, purely out of coincidence, is also unlikely. When the topic of self-termination is delivered to a mass audience in media and entertainment, it can have both positive and negative effects. These are what's known as the Werther and the Papageno effect. The Werther effect is the horrifying consequence that when self-termination is represented in news or entertainment, there are sometimes copycats, and the number sadly goes up. One month before Logic released 1-800, Netflix released a series called 13 Reasons Why. The National Association of School Psychologists released a warning statement saying its powerful storytelling may lead impressionable viewers to romanticize the choices made by the characters and or develop revenge fantasies. And they were correct. Following the show's debut in March of 2017, there was an increase among American teenagers. On the other end of the spectrum is the Papageno effect. This is when it's represented, but the person has overcome their issues. A good example was in 2019. Pete Davidson was rumored to have had these thoughts, but later appeared on SNL and explained that he had come out the other side. And this is also the story of Logic's 1-800. The person who wanted to leave, sought help, and came out the other side fine. When a young, impressionable audience is fed this information, it helps. So with all this being said, the song has not been met with universal approval. And just because you agree with the message of a song doesn't mean that you have to like the song too. The song can be seen as a bit corny, particularly the who can relate part, and because it has such an agreeable message, it's been accused of pandering. Joe Budden has referred to Logic as the pander king when referring to Logic's music in general. Joyner Lucas has also accused him of stealing his idea to have a phone number as a song title as he released his mixtape 508-507-2280 around the same time. But I think the most valid criticism online is that he simplifies it. The person in the song rings the hotline, is told about how great life is, and is miraculously cured. In reality, the helpline is to break you out of a thought path and lead you on to seeking help through other means. Although, how complicated can someone make something in a song that's supposed to be three minutes and palatable to the widest audience possible? And there are socioeconomic problems such as access to all the different help that someone in the situation would need that may not be available. That being said, Logic releasing a pop song that fully encapsulates the complexity of this issue is asking a bit too much of really anybody. His job was mainly to get the conversation started and spread awareness, and he achieved this. And as Joyner Lucas said, I'm not going to bash him for that record, but it's important not to look at Logic's 1-800 song in isolation. The YouTube channel Genius pointed out that during that same year, Tentacion was rapping about the self-termination of his friend Jocelyn Flores, and Lil Uzi Vert dealt with these either metaphorically or literally 
during his song Exo Tour Life. And also the advent of SoundCloud, emo rap, as well as artists like Lil Peep, had probably shined a brighter light on these issues as a whole, alongside Logic. Logic may have saved a generation in 2017, but if we look further back, there have been other rappers who have saved lives and gotten people out of traumatic situations. We mentioned Pete Davidson earlier, and he had something incredibly interesting to say in 2016, which was a year before 1-800 came out. He was on The Breakfast Club, and when speaking about hip-hop, he said, Kid Cudi's the best of all. He saved my life. I would have been gone if I didn't have Kid Cudi. He added, if you're 25 and under, I believe Kid Cudi's... I mean, in a way, I can explain it personally. Like, when I heard Kid Cudi, I just thought, it was like, yeah, he was highly relatable. You feel me? <laughs> I mean, basically, it's like, because, like, no matter what life you live, you know, life always gets you down. Like, no matter... It's from, like, something happening or just, like, you know, it just comes on to you. But uh, just the fact that you could find someone who could relate was, like, a relief. You feel me? And Kid Cudi was like that for, like, a lot of people, bro. Me included. So, and now shout out Cudi, bro. You feel me? Like, he'll... He, he will be, you know what I'm saying, one of the GOATs, you feel me? He'll always be, like, one of the best out there, just purely for the fact that, like, his music actually touched, you know what I'm saying, like, <sighs> basically touched our souls, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, he made music that was, like, highly, highly, highly relatable, and, you know what I'm saying, type of music I listen to is like, you know, trap, uh, West Coast, you feel me? Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 New York, you know what I'm saying? East Coast. Uh, shoot, I mean, I listen to rap from just about anywhere, everywhere now, you feel me? And, um, yeah, Cuddy just didn't hit you with all that, like, Bling bling, like women, cars, clothes, all that stuff. You know, he's like, yo, it's like, you know, just having someone to talk to. He saved your life. I truly believe if Man on the Moon didn't come out, I wouldn't be here. So before Logic, there was Kid Cudi. And before Kid Cudi, maybe it could have been Kanye, or who knows who else. Ultimately, the discussion of mental health in hip hop is nothing new, but it's probably a bit more prevalent than it used to be. You can even trace the topic of mental health struggles back to hip-hop's early beginnings when Grandmaster Flash was talking about a jungle inside his head and the message. And there's no doubt that songs like Tupac's So Many Tears and DMX's Slippin' have also helped people through tough times. Biggie also even had a song called Suicidal Thoughts. I'm sure you have songs of your own that you think probably saved your life, whether that be literally or figuratively, maybe metaphorically, maybe a bit of an exaggeration but pulled you out of a dark time in your life hip-hop has been and always will be about self-expression and mental health is no different all right you guys so that was hello hello yasin with how i just corny songs say the generation from dying man people just hate bro <laughs> people just hate you feel me people just hate just to hate you know what i'm saying like i swear this shit was funny bro like hey just Last night, uh, I was scrolling through my Instagram, and you know how Instagram got the reels now. Uh, this reel just was like, the second it was like sort of like off screen a little bit, but you could just see just enough to be like, because I was like, all right, so I was scrolling, and I saw one, two, three reels, you know, the third one. I think it's three or two, maybe two or three reels that be cut off, and it's like I see it. And I was like, yo, what the heck is... Dude, I swear, bro. It was a dog. Like, but... <laughs> it was a dog. And, uh... It was, like, its eyes were, like... I don't know, almost like it was pushed into its face. Freaking... It, it, it was basically hairless. And, you know, just tufts of hair everywhere, like... <laughs> <laughs> his teeth, bro. His teeth, like people in the conversation were saying that, like it looked like a a, a freaking 
British person or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, a, oh my, like, bro, his teeth were jagged and everywhere. Like, what, uh, when the dude closed his mouth, it, it like, you know, it looked like this. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, that thing was ugly, bro. At first, I didn't think it was a dog. I was like, yo, what the heck is this? I've never seen this animal before. Uh, so I was like, yo, of course, I go in the comment section. I was like, yo, what is, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to see what it is. And uh, I saw that his name was Troopy. I was like, yo, that's a Troopy. My dumb ass, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, that's a chupacabra? Dog. Like, I was like, yo, we're keeping chupacabras as pets now? And I was like, nah, bro. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I, I kept scrolling just to see. You know what I'm saying? People were really saying it's a chupacabra. And I was like, nah, it's a dog. So I was like, oh, damn, that's one ugly ass dog. <laughs> but here's the real funny part. It was like, it was... The, the community in that, under that uh, uh, content was split, bro. Like, people would say, oh, it's the cutest dog ever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These guys are just haters, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the people, <laughs> personally, I would say, just had the same first expression. When I first saw that thing, and would just, you know, just happen to say something about it. I was just like, oh, my God, bro. I looked at it, bro. I was like, oh, my God, dog. Phone almost jumped out my hand the way I just flung that shit back. I was like, yo, what is that, bro? Like, son. Like, the you know what I'm saying? The people that were calling it cute, man, were just, you know, calling people that were calling it ugly haters. And I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah, man. Like, in a way, it kind of is hating on the dog because, like, yeah, it's a dog. But to always call it cute because it's a dog? I mean, y'all call humans ugly anyway. You can't call a dog ugly? Like, what's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with us? You feel me? Like, yo, you can't call a dog ugly? But we call, like, you know, I go on your profile and just hate on you. Be like, hey, yo, whoop, whoop, whoop. You look like, whoop, whoop. No, we can roast on dogs, too. Dogs can get it. You feel me? Any animal can get it. You feel me? Like... Everything on this earth can get it. You feel me? Like, yo, you can get flame, bro. You can get, like, yeah, your barbecue. You feel me? But, um, I mean, that's just me personally. But I also understand the other side that's like, no, it's a dog. It's cute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just like, eh, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, dogs are better than humans. Anyways, you feel me? So it's like. Yeah, man, we gotta show him love. But the other side of me is like, yo, nah, you gotta get this. <laughs> All right, I'm telling you, bro. But, um, yeah, y'all let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section down below, man. You already know it's Boomer with Bali Star. Make sure to leave a like just below, the, just below the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new so that we can join up with the All Star Gang up in this thing. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next one. 100. Oh, she turned up, she turned out. Yeah, she turned. Hey, tell me that you were trying to save me. One, try to constantly kill me on the daily. One, be constantly going through these daily. She said, Why you leave me on? I know you don't deserve me. We got icy cold, we were want to Albuquerque. Oh, did me wrong, you don't deserve me. Oh. She said that you don't deserve me. Yeah, it goes down in the bar. Girls all flashing, I'm down in the walls.